You are Locked On Wolverines, your daily podcast on the Michigan Wolverines, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Happy Monday. We are doing it very bare bones. This is going to be a little bit more low tech due to the mobile variety of what we're doing here. Yes, I have a very Miami look. I'm sure you all, if you're watching, are going to make fun of the whole thing. I don't care. Get it out of your system if you feel like you need to. Locked on Wolverines podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, where it is your team every day. I am your man on the ground, Isaiah Hole, publisher of Wolverines Wire through USA Today Sports Media Group. I am here on the ground. As you can see, maybe, don't know how much you can see. There's palm trees back down there somewhere. It's a little dark out now. I am here in Fort Lauderdale. It took some time to get here. My flight was canceled last night unceremoniously. It's supposed to be boarding, and they're like, sorry, no, canceled, canceled. Everybody go home. And uh, then I rushed to get here, rushed to get to Fort Lauderdale. I booked multiple plane tickets and then finally settled on uh, a direct flight to Miami that I was able to get. Uh, For those who don't know, our media hotel is here in Fort Lauderdale. This is where we were supposed to be uh, having all of our press conferences and all of that stuff. They're all virtual. But I rushed to get here to get to practice because we were supposed to we were supposed to be able to ha- go to practice and see it at 115, supposed to leave at 1245, at 1230 ish. The Orange Bowl announces that practices have now been closed to the media, Michigan and Georgia's alike. So we did not get to see anything. We don't get to see a single player in person until the actual Capital One. Orange Bowl college football semi playoff. But nonetheless, it is what it is. That means more free time, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but let's, uh, we're, we're going to keep this one shorter just so I can try to get it out, get it up, because using the, uh, using the laptop means that it's going to be a slower situation. Not using my camera that I normally use in order to be able to upload all of that stuff quickly. Uh, today's episode has been brought to you by Sonos. Sonos is the official sponsor of ESPN College Football. Go to Sonos.com to learn more. So anyway, yes, here in beautiful South Florida, the team is uh, having dinner at Fogo to Chow tonight. Uh, they are, uh, by the time that this is out, I don't think any of you would be able to do anything with that information. So I can tell you that they have a beach outing tomorrow. They went on a cruise yesterday. Josh Gaddis said in the uh, in our press uh, press conference that we had virtually earlier today. So uh, it sounds like they're having some fun. I I don't know if they'll keep to the beach situation because last time they came here to the Orange Bowl, they did not go to the beach, famously. So, but the, they've talked about wanting to to really find a way to balance work and pleasure. They are treating this as a business trip. And I, I think one of the good things about this team compared to maybe some others is that, it, like Jim Harbaugh said, all year long, you know, this is the type of team that we, like a lot of times I got to pull them back, right? Like I don't have to ask them to do things. I have to pull them back. And uh, I feel like that's really uh, kind of a thing that is true of this team. I, I would, I, I could imagine if given the option, hey, you guys want to go to the beach or do you want to go get some more work in? I kind of feel like this is a type of team that would go and get more work in. That's just what I believe. Uh, But uh, maybe maybe they would, maybe they wouldn't. I don't know that they'd be given that option anyway. Uh, But uh, that's uh, that's the kind of, I think, the great thing about this team. Uh, So as far as I know, as far as we're hearing, this is a very healthy team. The only person out still is Ronnie Bell, of course. And... uh, Blake Corum is reportedly much healthier. Uh, he, he had said today that he's able to make cuts, things that he wasn't able to do. Josh Gaddis said it's exciting to see him at full speed again. And I think the, the big takeaway for me, aside, outside of that, coming out of today and the, the media availability that we had, was what I asked Josh Gaddis about, uh, about uh, practice, I said, because 
the thing is that a lot of people have had concerns about is that layoff, right? You go from December 4th to December 31st, you have all this momentum. I remember even listening to the radio coming out of the uh, listening national radio coming out of the Big Ten championship game after the uh, the announcement was made. And it was, well, everyone was kind of saying, well, if Michigan played Georgia next week, Michigan would win. It's a different scenario when Georgia can kind of lick its wounds, kind of figure out some things. Michigan maybe loses a little bit of momentum. And then Cade McNamara arrives on Christmas Day and says, I have loved what we've been doing with practice. I've loved the intensity of it. It's like we've taken everything up a notch. Isn't that we, we didn't lose anything. It's like things are continuing to move in that positive direction. So that's really good news, of course, right? So uh, then Josh Gaddis says today, because I asked him, I said, you know, about having that momentum and, you know, what Cade said and uh, what do you do to, you know, how, how have you, what have you observed in uh, the one practice that they had yesterday? Because again, they got in on Christmas day and he says, I was blown away because the intensity, the urgency, the, all of these things, the confidence that I am seeing from this team, it's, he's like, you know, as a coach, I, I was wondering like, Am, am I going to come to South Florida and are, are there going to be a, is there going to be a situation? Sorry, uh, computers looking a little weird for a second. Am I going to come to South Florida? Is it going to be a situation where suddenly like, it looks like, Oh, maybe things aren't, uh, maybe they're taking a step back They're They look at the palm trees and the ocean and, and, you know, it's obviously very warm here. And does that suddenly change things? And he said, no, it's, it, they are more locked in. So I think that that bodes really well for this team. If they can have that translate from what's what we've seen to being somehow even better, because I mean, it's almost like an extra fall camp in a way, right? And they, they have a lot of confidence that they can go out and do some things. And they're playing a team that certainly has confidence, but that confidence has been shaken a little bit. So I'm curious to see how that will work. Anyhow, all right, we're, we're going to move on. We're going to continue talking about this matchup coming up. Obviously, it's going to be huge. Uh, Michigan and Georgia. I almost wanted to say Florida because I'm in Florida. <laughs> anyway, uh, but before we do, I got to tell you a little something about Built Bar. Y'all don't, y'all don't know much. I love Built Bar. Uh, certainly, those eggnog uh, bars that I got are incredible that I told you about, uh, maybe that's a little bit out of season now that we're past Christmas, but, oh man, I could just eat a box of those right out of the, right out of the gates, right? I could wake up and just be like, all right, but I'm not going to, even though I am a glutton for them. Uh, I do have two at a time most of the time, uh, because that's the thing about Built Bar. They're so delicious. If you don't know what they are, it's a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar and it's high protein, low calorie, low carb. It's everything you want. And, uh, yeah. So go to built.com and put in promo code LOCKED15. Give it a try. I put my money where my mouth is. I have bought dozens of boxes. So built.com, promo code LOCKED15. All right, continuing. Uh, I, I am going to say apologies if I feel erratic. Because I, I never shy away from telling you guys the truth, as Jamie Morris calls me the whole truth. Uh, but uh, it's uh, we're going off a of very little sleep here. <laughs> like I said, air, airport situation last night, six a.m. flight today. It's uh, it, it's a very it's a very uh, very little sleep situation. So doing my best. That's another reason to keep this thing short. I do want to give you a little programming note as well. The uh, since. Chris got, Christmas kind of got the better of me doing all the Christmas errands and getting ready to come down here and all of that. Uh, the mailbag didn't end up happening. I've tried to do it Friday. I tried to do it Christmas Day. I just could not seem to fit it in. So we will do that tomorrow on Tuesday, uh, barring something different, something crazy. So I consider it locked from last Thursday when I put the call out for questions. We'll get to all of that on, uh, all of that on Tuesday. And then Wednesday, uh, we'll, we'll probably react to whatever happened on Tuesday as far as uh, media availability and such. And we do have uh, media availability both Tuesday and Wednesday. So we'll do it then. Uh, 
Thursday is going to be a special one. If you're a Michigan uh, Alumni Association member and you are down here in the greater Miami area, there is a uh, mixer at 4 p.m. at, uh, I don't remember the name of the place, but it's a graffiti studio. You can reach out to me for more info. I'll probably tweet out about it at some point. Uh, and it's going to be a mixer for Michigan alums. And there will be former players like Jake Butt, who you all know and love and is part of the show generally, uh, and Mike Martin. And they will be joining me. I will be doing the show live from that from there i say live but i mean at the same time i mean it'll it'll get posted after the fact but live you can go watch me do the podcast with uh jake and mike and you know maybe some others that were i was told were going to be there uh you can hobnob with some of those guys so and then friday preview uh probably maybe 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 thursday will technically be the preview and then friday we'll see what we do since that's the game day uh but uh that is the plan for now uh, so I just went on, uh, Sirius XM big 10 today. And, uh, I, I, I want to share a little bit of something that I kind of brought up there because a lot of the, the talk that we've seen, uh, certainly for instance, like oh, Georgia had Dan Lanning and Jordan Davis and, uh, Lewis sign and or Cine. I don't know how you, I've never learned how you say his name. I should have asked him when I covered him as recruit. Uh, they had all these guys available on defense. And uh, they talked mostly about uh, about obviously stopping Michigan's run game, and there was a little bit about the pass game. One of the things that I think is unheralded, and that we'll have the Michigan defensive players and Georgia offensive players uh, tomorrow uh, on Tuesday, is I think that one of the interesting things is going to be the battle between the Michigan defense and the Georgia offense, and I think. As much as people are trying to pay attention to Aiden Hutchinson and David Ajabo against those tackles and Stetson Bennett and all of that, I think maybe the crux of the game comes down to more than anything, probably more than Michigan's offense versus Georgia's defense, in my opinion, Michigan's linebackers. I think if Michigan's linebackers, because they're going to be tasked, certainly not only with stopping the run, but trying to stall or stop, probably more so stall, Brock Bowers. If you can take away Brock Bowers, and you, but on top of that, slow the run game, because certainly Georgia wants to run. They average about 200 yards a game themselves. I think it's a situation where that put, you know, you want to put the ball, if you're Michigan, in Stetson Bennett's hands and say, try to get your outside guys, because here's what, we know Georgia wants to do. Georgia wants to play the middle of the field. And certainly I think that, uh, that Michigan was going to try to take that away. We've seen that from Mike McDonald, right? And Mike McDonald's MO tends to be, I'm going to find the thing that you want to do the most. And I'm going to try to take it away for the most part. Uh, obviously he, they knew they weren't going to be able to take away the Ohio state pass game entirely. Uh, but uh, they were certainly able to take away the run game and, Made the made Ohio State really one dimensional, and it made it so that Michigan could kind of tee off uh, on the pass game and make them stall out, uh, which is was a really good way to go about it. I think that Michigan similarly is going to look at Georgia and say, "We're going to take away the entire middle of the field. You're going to have to work outside, and if you're going to have to work outside, then you're not only going to have to deal with the pass rush, you're also going to have to deal with the fact that the secondary." has looked really good lately, right? There's even an Ohio State completed passes, right? But they did it like, really in just spectacular fashion. You know, you, you look at where DJ Turner and Vincent Gray were kind of all throughout, and they were right in the hip pocket of those extremely talented wide receivers. So I think that they, if, if, if you can get those linebackers in particular, include the safeties to some degree, but mostly I think the linebackers, because, you know, you're not you, the last thing you want to see is a safety on a tight end. If you can get those linebackers to do something there, take away Brock Bowers as much as you can and take away the run game as much as you can. It certainly creates a matchup problem. I don't think enough people are talking about Michigan's defense, which is as played as good as anybody holding Ohio state to 27 points. Uh, 
to holding Iowa to just three. I know Iowa's offense is putrid, but still, that's incredible. Iowa still manages to score on people, right? No matter, you know, they still tend to get up there in the 20s. Uh, and uh, Penn State was neutered. Maryland, with its incredible offense, was neutered. Uh, I think that uh, if you can find ways to to stop or slow the Georgia offense, Michigan is going to be really hard to beat. And I think that starts with the linebackers. All right. Anyway, that's uh, that. We're going to continue here talking about this game coming up this week. It's hard to believe that we are days away. We are essentially a Tuesday away from a, a Saturday game since the game is on Friday. So super excited. But uh, nonetheless, I'm going to move on here. Bet Online has you covered this entire holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as college football continues to march through bowl season and pro football playoffs are on the way. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. Head over to the website, betonline.ag, or use your mobile device to sign up today. Receive your 50% welcome bonus using the promo code Locked On. Uh, and then you get that with your first deposit from basketball, football, NHL, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports. So don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available. Bet online where the game starts. All right, so we we'll try to do these more earlier so that uh, I don't know. If, I guess you can see me. I'm obviously just using lighting in here. I've already packed enough stuff. That's plenty. Um, so I, I didn't bring any extra lighting in order to do the podcast, but so we'll try to do it more in the day, but, uh, uh, that's just, this is just kind of how things shook out today so far. Um, anyway, last thing I kind of want to get to is my personal confidence. I, I do feel like Michigan is going to win this game. I don't think it's like an obvious thing that's going to happen per se. Uh, but I do think that, uh, Michigan's. Michigan's as good as anybody. And I think that people look at Georgia and, well, Georgia played Alabama and Alabama and, is, and Georgia are both in the SEC and look how close they played. To me, this game reminds me a lot of Ohio State uh, going into the playoffs in 2014, uh, aside from the fact that Michigan isn't using a third string quarterback. Uh, but I, I feel like they're just firing on all cylinders. Michigan's offense is gone out there and done what it's needed to do against top defenses uh, we haven't really seen Georgia's offense do that nearly as much I know I talked about that last week uh, I think that uh, special teams can come into play and both special teams are really evenly matched uh, I, I think that when you look at quarterback to quarterback I would rather have the combination of Cade McNamara and J.J. McCarthy over Stetson Bennett and J.T. Daniels at this juncture. Uh, I think that they, they can do quite well. I think that it's hard to prepare for the Michigan offense, given how many playmakers they have. I, I like the way the defense has been playing. They've been playing as good as any defense in the country, Georgia included, in the last several weeks in particular. And I think that Michigan is just kind of better than people are giving them credit for because they talk about, well, Georgia's run game, you know, run defense is, Really incredible that Michigan wants to run. Don't think they're going to be able to do it. I think that, I mean, this is the best offensive line that Georgia will have faced from a collective standpoint. And if Michigan can get enough push, a guy like Hassan Haskins is tough to bring down. I know that that's what they have circled, but it's just kind of like Michigan had Kenneth Walker circled, right? Hey, you know, I remember asking Jim Harbaugh, and maybe I wasn't the one who asked him. I, I know I asked him MSU questions, but I remember him being asked about Kenneth Walker, and he's like, well, he's really tough to bring down. You got to do it. And certainly Michigan couldn't, right? It happens. And we've seen, I'm sure, that other teams that have said, hey, we want to stop Hassan Haskins, and they don't. Uh, if the line can get him enough room, we've seen him do things in very limited small spaces. And if Georgia gets punched in the mouth again, and another interesting thing that Gaddis said today is like, you know, both teams are going to be able to move the ball early. And then it's just about what they do after that when adjustments are made. If Michigan in particular, because I feel like the Michigan defense 
has been pretty good at stopping teams early. If Michigan's offense can get on the board early, I just I think that that will settle in that uh, B pone feeling. You know, for for those them go the people who don't read them go blog, the uh, black pit of negative expectations for Georgia. Georgia has historically tended to not do well on the national stage. I mean, Michigan as well, but I feel like Michigan's kind of gotten that monkey off their back with Ohio State and Iowa win, with Penn State and Wisconsin, with the night game against Nebraska. They've done it time and time again. The only one that it didn't really work out was Michigan State. I'm not saying that Michigan will win this game per se. I just think that Michigan is in a really good situation where it very well could and maybe should win this game, despite being a touchdown ish underdog but we'll get more into what i think will happen down the line anyway that'll do it for us today like i said shorter show uh (laughs) trying to uh to keep the energy up here probably failing but nonetheless hope this worked out uh doing this on the road trying to figure out uh different avenues uh but nonetheless we will be back on tuesday and then like i said uh to Tuesday's the mailbag. Wednesday will likely react to things that we're hearing from uh, from everything uh, here down here in Fort Lauderdale. Thursday is the live show uh, slash preview. And then Friday is probably just more preview material. All right, so that will do it. And we will talk to you quite soon. Thanks for watching and or listening. Peace. <laughs>